Morning. Welcome to the First Christian Church Disciples of Christ of Ravenna. Uh, I want to see that everybody was here today that didn't get all blown away yesterday in the storm, and that everybody that's online has internet today because of the storm. So we have a few announcements. They're still collecting pop tabs for the Ronald McDonald House. And the CWF is still collecting flip-flops and socks. And then we still need greeters for August and September. And we are still having the candy cells in the back for CWF. We have a, a hard announcement here. The pastoral candle is lit today for Chris Garez, a very, very good friend, best friend of Pastor Lori from the Manaway Center Christian Church. I've known her from the Christian church, and she's a wonderful woman. And I feel so bad today for her children. So pray for her family today. And also for the island of Maui, who lost everything in the fire. Pray that they can get, get things back, and, and it's just awful that they lost everything on the whole island. And there will be Bible class Wednesday, 11.30 fellowship, and 12 o'clock class. Is there any other announcements? Okay, then let's do the call to awareness. Lord, who dwelled in your sanctuary, who has walked in blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the, sorry, and no slander on his tongue. Who does his neighbor no wrong? Our first hymn is 530, I've got peace like a river. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Our Lord, our good shepherd, you are the soul of our truth and everlasting joy. We praise you for the power which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom which is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs and restore the brokenhearted. You have healed the wounded. You have revealed yourself to your people and the building and against in which the gates of hell cannot prevail. In your prevailing love, in your prevailing love, we will lead you people into redemption, and in your strength, you will guide them. Fill our hearts with love as we worship you today with the prayer that God, Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Now, not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Our scripture reading this morning comes from the New Testament, from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 14, beginning with verse 22. Listen, listen, for a word from God. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The stories of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Harvard professor and well-known Presbyterian preacher George Buttrick was once on an airplane headed home from a conference. During the flight, he pulled out a notepad to work on Sunday's sermon. After a few minutes, the man sitting next to him spoke up. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I can see how hard you're working, and I just have to ask, what are you doing? I'm a minister, Buttrick replied, and I'm writing my sermon for Sunday. Ah, religion, said the man. I can't say I'm much into the complexities of religion myself, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, the golden rule. That's about all the religion I need. I see, said Buttrick. And what do you do? I'm an astronomy professor, said the man. I teach at the university. Ah, astronomy, said Buttrick. I can't say I know much about the complexities of astronomy. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That's about all the astronomy I need. In just about every sphere of life, from relationships to politics to science to religion, we are tempted to reduce complex concepts to simple ideas that are easier for us to grasp. We long to break things down into the lowest common denominator that we can either accept or reject. Something about being human makes us prone to categorize, compartmentalize, and stereotype. We want things to be black and white, either this or that. Perhaps this is because we humans long for certainty. We long for simplicity, but life, people, and situations are all complex. I think of the times that I've been so certain I understood something or someone. 
that I had it all figured out what this person or this organization or this idea was all about. And then my perspective gets flipped. My sense of certainty gone, and I'm filled with a sinking sensation. These moments when our certitude, certitude goes out the proverbial window are disorienting and disappointing. And yet the stories of our faith tradition, the biblical stories of God, teach us that it is when we are in the midst of our uncertainty, that it is then that God is there in these moments of struggle, seeking to expand our perspective, seeking to transform us. Today's story about Peter's brief walk and his struggle to stay on top of the water appears only in the Gospel of Matthew. Mark includes a story about Jesus coming across the sea and calming the storm. John uses an even shorter version, and Luke leaves it out altogether. The three Gospel writers who tell the story agree that it followed the feeding of the 5,000, and that Jesus' calming of the storm was a miracle worked for the disciples alone, a very unusual occurrence in the New Testament. These three gospel writers also share an ancient understanding of the sea as the abode of demonic forces, as the place on earth where chaos still reigns, and it's through this perspective which makes Jesus' Jesus's walk across it all that much more miraculous. By strolling across the stormy Sea of Galilee as if it were the sunny side of the street, Jesus is proving his dominion over the chaos. Jesus is proving his power over the uncertainty of the deep, over the strong winds, and the crashing waves that threatened to pull Peter under. There's something so appealing about Peter. He is passionate, always rushing in where angels fear to tread. Peter is brash and says out loud what the others only think. In Matthew, it is Peter who asked Jesus to explain his parables. Peter, who answers Jesus' questions first. It's Peter who understands Jesus' true identity, but also fails to understand what it will cost him. It's Peter whom Jesus asked to pray with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And it is Peter who falls asleep. It's Peter whom Jesus calls the foundational rock of the church. And yet it is Peter who cracks and denies Christ. And in today's story, it is Peter who asks Jesus to call him to walk with him upon the water. And it is Peter who sinks. Peter is full of faith one minute and he's full of doubt the next. He's a complex figure, walking tall on his confidence in Jesus one moment and seek, sinking into the chaotic depths the next. Peter loves Jesus, and Peter lets him down. At the beginning of today's story, we heard, the, we heard and read that Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and head to the other side of the sea. The Greek word made is better translated as compelled. He compelled his disciples to go on ahead of him. While Jesus went alone into the mountains to pray, and by nightfall, his disciples have their hands full, trying to steer their little boat right into a high wind and even higher waves. They rode all night and are all presumably soaked, tired, cold, 
teeth chattering, hands blistered, and struggling. And it is then Jesus comes strolling. He comes strolling by early in the morning. As they battle and float precariously over the watery chaos, it's understandable when someone cries, it's a ghost. But immediately Jesus says, take heart. It is I. Have no fear. And Peter responds, Jesus, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, if you ask me, that's a pretty strange thing to say. Why not say, Lord, if it is you, tell us what we had for supper last night. Or, Lord, if it is you, make this storm stop right now. But instead, Peter proposes, Lord, if it is you, I want to walk on the water. In essence, Peter is saying, take away my doubt. I want to be certain it is you. After all, our human perspective is that no one can walk on water. No one can feed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. Jesus says, come. So Peter swings his legs over the side of the boat and takes a few steps towards Jesus across the heaving surface. And he's walking until he notices the powerful wind. And he gets scared. And walking becomes sinking. Certainty becomes uncertainty. Peter's perspective of the power of Jesus and the power of the wind have shifted. Jesus asks, why did you doubt? Often, the focus of this biblical story is on Peter's doubt, on yet another failure of faith or understanding. What if we flip the perspective and imagine the story turning out another way? What if Peter had not sunk? What if he had jumped out of the boat with perfect confidence, landed with a squelch with both feet flat on the water, and walked over to Jesus without hesitation? What if the other disciples had followed suit, piling out of the boat after him, and all of them, with perfect faith, had romped on the water while the storm raged and the wind beat the sails and lightning split the dark night above their heads? It would be a different story. It might even be a better story, but it would not be a story about us. The truth about us is far more complex. The truth about us is that we obey and we fear. We walk and we sink. We believe and we doubt. We don't just do one or the other. We do both. We believe in God, in Jesus, but terrible things happen. Wars and rumors of wars, violence, suffering, misunderstandings, broken relationships, sickness, living through loved ones that have died, and it seems to us at times that storm will never end. This is exactly why we need Jesus. If we never sank, if we could walk on the water just fine all by ourselves, we would not need God or a Savior. Our doubts, fearsome as they are, remind us 
who we are and whose we are and whom we need in our lives to save those very lives. When we sink, and like Peter, we all sink, God reaches out. God catches us, asks us, why did you doubt? A response of grace and mercy, never rejecting us. Jesus returns us to the boat, knowing full well that the only reason we're in that boat in the first place is because we believe or we want to believe and because we mean to follow him through all our faithful and doubt-filled days. This story reminds us that God already has us in God's sight. Even before we call out, God is headed toward us, even already here among us, reaching out a hand to stop us from sinking. We are returned to a boat filled with faithful and doubt-filled companions who grab us by the scruff of the neck and haul us back on board. All of us who are in this boat together through moments of certainty and uncertainty, in times of peace and in the midst of struggle. And we remind each other, Jesus, is truly the Son of God. Amen. Will you join me now in singing hymn number 576, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. I want to take a moment and thank Elaine for filling in last minute um, as Hel Helen uh, is ill today and uh, so I wasn't quite sure whether we were going to have an accompanist or not. Um, and Elaine 
answered the phone and stepped in, so thank you for that. Let us be in a spirit of prayer together. God, who calms the chaos, we praise your faithfulness to us, your mercy granted us, and your grace freely given us. You teach us how to be your people in the midst of this chaotic world. We are grateful for your love that surrounds us. We are thankful for the beauty of your creation. Gracious God, you call us at times to let go, to step out in faith, and to trust in your love and care. Give us courage to step out boldly and sufficient faith to follow without fear wherever you send us. We confess that we do not always understand your ways. We are discouraged when life takes unexpected turns and our carefully laid plans and dreams are washed away. In these moments, we confess that we lose sight of your presence, especially when life gets difficult and we feel as if we are being overcome by the waves of fear, disappointment, and heartache. Forgive us, God. Grant us patience to wait for your good timing. Open our eyes to recognize your leading in our lives, to listen for your gentle whisper when we least expect it, and then give us courage to face the storms of life, trusting in you, even when we cannot yet see the outcome. We pray for those named and unnamed, those who are in need of healing, wholeness, and peace. May your spirit whisper powerful words of hope to all who feel that the waves of illness and heartache are pulling them down under. May they feel the power of your compassionate, outstretched hand comforting them, reminding them that you are with them in health and sickness, that not even the threat of death will separate you from them. We pray for the beloved who have been lost to disaster and violence and war. In these moments of witnessing the destruction of towns, nations, and lives around your beloved world, remind us again of our call to be the hands and feet of Christ. Remind us of our call as disciples of Christ to seek to be a movement for wholeness wherever there is brokenness. Hear us as we continue our prayers in silence. We give thanks for the hope we find in Christ Jesus, the one who is with us in our moments of faith and in our moments of doubt, the one who lifts us up from the deep, restores our hope in you. In the name of the one who calls us, empowers us, and rescues us, we leave these prayers. Amen. 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 Will you join me now in singing our communion hymn, number 409, verses 1, 2, and 3.
The Lord is the giver of every good and perfect gift, beginning with this table laid out for us. We all come to this table with gratitude. We believe that through partaking of these emblems of the Lord's grace, that we may cleanse our hearts of all things unrighteous. May we all be inspired to go forth and live more in accordance with the Lord's will each and every day. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In grateful response to all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we continue our worship as we present our tithes and our offerings. Will you join me in the stewardship prayer? Lord, you call us to follow you in faith and promise to provide us everything we need for ministry in your name. Bless these gifts we bring, that we may use them faithfully to share the good news of your love and mercy 
In your holy name we pray. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in the benediction. You have been embraced by the love of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and blessed by Jesus. We go into this world to offer healing and hope. We go in peace. And as we go, May the grace of Christ surround us, the love of God enfold us, and the company of the Holy Spirit uplift us, now and always. Go in peace. Will you join me in singing our closing hymn, for number 431, verse 3.